Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to another weekly wrap-up. Even though this past week felt really busy, I managed to finish four books. I don't know where the time went. I spent most of this week, it felt like, watching the first season of Quantico on Netflix because I got super obsessed all of a sudden. It's not the best television series, but it has Priyanka Chopra. Have you seen her recently? <laughs> Anyway, the books that I read, and if you hear that crunching noise in the background, that's my dog. She always starts eating when I start filming. It never fails. The first thing I want to talk about is Born by Jeff Vandermeer. This is his newest release. I have previously read his Southern Reach trilogy. I absolutely loved Annihilation, which is the first book in that series. And he writes in the new weird genre, which isn't exactly my cup of tea. I'm not really into surreal, strange, weird, bizarre stories, but Vandermeer makes this work because he is a, such a good writer. And in, in Born in particular, the story is so emotional. It was fantastic. So Born is set in a world where um, I think biotech has kind of gone crazy and crashed the world. Um, the entire world seems uh, destroyed in many ways, perhaps by climate change, the rising oceans, wars, etc. But the action is set in one particular nameless city, which is mostly in, in ruins. And the focal point of the city is the company building. This company, it's only referred to as the company, dealt in biotech, and it created some monsters, which probably backfired on them. The big First strange thing in the story is the Godzilla-sized bear that can levitate. Yes, it has a flying giant bear that is as big as a skyscraper as far as I can tell. This uh, giant bear moored terrorizes the scavengers still trying to eke out a living in this destroyed city, including our main characters Rachel and her partner Wick. One day when Rachel is out scavenging, she sees in the fur of the giant bear this blob. She thinks it's a plant. She becomes attached to it. She takes it home and she names it Boar. It is the shape-shifting thing described as an inverted squid. Very, very strange. And Rachel uh, serves as its mother. She raises it. She teaches it. And Boar learns to, to talk and becomes a person. But they don't know what he or it is. They don't really know what he's capable of. And he doesn't know either. And then it seems that Born may be far more dangerous than she had thought. I want to go into more of the story than that, just to say that the relationships in this, what, what the characters are striving for and their natures was incredibly touching. This, the, the way that Rachel feels about Born as if she is his parent, that she wants to protect him even though the, the real concern might be protecting herself from Born. That it was beautiful. And there is one line in this book from near the end that just gutted me in some way. It's, we all just want to be people and none of us know what that really means. That is what this story is about. I really enjoyed this. I don't want to say too much more about it because I think um, part of the joy of it is discovering the emotional undercurrents for yourself and, and the revelations and, and their meaning um, is you know kind of a personal journey, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I would totally recommend this if you are interested in reading something by Vandermeer. I think it is less strange and scary than uh, Annihilation and the Southern Reach trilogy were, um, but definitely still weird weird and a little surreal in places, and if you know you like that or if you just want to try it out, uh, Born is, is a good one and a pretty quick read. Next I listened to Shrill, Notes from a Loud Woman by Lindy West. This was another kind of random pick for me because while well, I heard the about this book before, I didn't know anything about Lindy West, and this is kind of a memoir. It's a series of, of essays very much about her personal life, about um, her, her struggles as an overweight child, accepting her, her body image about being a fat person. And she, she writes about these topics. She's a columnist that writes about 
feminism and social justice and body image and, and comedy and, and such. Uh, and so these, these essays are all kind of reflections on her career and issues that she's become involved in. Um, so some parts of this I really enjoyed. There was a piece on her abortion which as she says, was a pretty mundane experience, but that's part of why she wanted to share it. I, I liked that, along with the piece about um, how she dealt with a troll online who actually apologized to her, which is so unusual. There were also some pieces on her, her marriage, her relationship with her husband, and stand-up comedy that I didn't get into that much, but um, on the whole, I thought this was really well written, and I really enjoyed her humor just so much. I really liked Lindy West as a person and how she presents herself. So um, I enjoyed this a lot and I think that the audiobook is a great way to experience this because West uh, does the audio herself. Um, so I'd recommend it for that if you want to read about feminist social justice issues and about somebody who uh, deals with an incredible amount of negative uh, response to her work online is something that a lot of women um, have experienced. So yeah, I don't have much more to say about this than that other than it was kind of eye-opening and not the kind of thing that I, I usually read, but I'm really glad that I did. Next I read Ascension by Jacqueline Koyanagi, which you may remember from um, a video I did a little while ago called like top five science fiction fantasy novels I want to read. That was for the booktube SFF babble topics. And and um, Ascension has been on my TBR for a long time because it is one of those books that comes up all the time when people are recommending diverse science fiction. It has queer and lesbian rep, women of color, um, disability chronic illness representation, um, and it just sounded really interesting about uh, a, a female engineer with a chronic illness on a spaceship doing stuff with the crew. Um, and I read this with a group of friends and I think we pretty unanimously decided that this book had some weaknesses, that there were some parts of it that failed pretty heavily, which I'm sad about because I really respect what I think Koyanagi was going for with this book, that she wanted to write a book that had this representation that that tackled these elements and did them well because she has an audience that needs it. But yeah, um, there were some things in this that I completely disagreed with. Um, there's a polyamorous relationship romance that I thought um, the characters did not handle introducing it appropriately or respectfully. Um, there's an element where uh, there are these spirit guides that are uh, basically encouraged to starve themselves to death so that their spirits can ascend to the next life or the next level. It's basically anorexia. And while I don't think that the author is trying to portray anorexia in a positive way, the world building kind of implied that and it really bothered me. Uh, so there were things like that, there were, there were other things as well. It needed more character development, it needed far more world building. I thought that I was putting more thought into figuring out the world building than the author had, which is never a good feeling. A bunch of stuff didn't make sense and overall it felt like a mystic fantasy story rather than an actual science fiction adventure. Um, the real downfall, of course, I think is that the author just didn't write it super well, and this is this is not saying that she is a terrible writer, it's that I don't think she was quite up to this task yet. There were some massive plot holes, things that made no sense whatsoever, and if I noticed them, that means they are really obvious. I don't notice plot holes sometimes, I'm not good at that. I wrote a better review of this on Goodreads, which I will link down below, which is a bit more coherent than what I just said. Um, but on the whole, I was disappointed in this. Um, I'm not sure that I would want to read more of this story if there's ever a follow-up novel, but I would certainly like to read whatever Koyanagi writes next, especially if it is a different story in a different world. Am I getting red? It got really hot in here all of a sudden and I'm like sweating, so good thing I'm on to the last book, right? The last thing that I read this week was A Plague on Both Your Houses by Susanna Gregory. This is the first in her mystery series about Matthew Bartholomew, who is a physician and teacher at the University of Cambridge. This is set in 1348. Most of it takes place at Michael House at the University of Cambridge, um, right as the Black Death is rolling into town. Um, um, 
Bartholomew notices that people start dying. People seem to be murdered at an alarming rate at his uh, university, and it may involve a plot where one university, like Oxford, is trying to undermine Cambridge, possibly because one of them wants to be top dog when they're trying to recover from the plague devastating the population and the clergy, which I didn't quite understand, probably because I don't necessarily understand the time period and the way that universities work in England. Um, but nevertheless, it becomes a really complicated plot about which of these things is real, which is not, and it is just a tangled web of lies and deceit, and Bartholomew's family and friends and colleagues are all involved in this. I'm not sure how attached I am to Bartholomew and how much I understand him as a person and his personality. I mean, I've only read one book, of course, but I am comparing this so heavily with my experience with Brother Cadfile because, you know, am I reading this because somebody recommended it to me after I read Cadfile? Yes, absolutely. Um, it is kind of a similar time period, but I, I think that this series is going to be much darker and grittier and more realistic about the harshness and the brutality of life at this time. And this book is filled with people dying of the plague and descriptions of how they die and the the, the corpses lying in the streets and the ditches and the, the plague pits where bodies are dumped and then limed. And that was unpleasant, but also realistic. Um, I think in some ways the Brother Cadfile stories were um, a little idyllic. <laughs> um, pleasant, sweet, comforting, soothing life within the, uh, the abbey walls. And this series is probably not going to be anything like that. So um, I enjoy this first book, and I think I'll give it one or two more books um, once the, the kind of rough edges of the first the first setup book are, are worked off and see if I like it um, more after that, because it's not, not bad, I just don't know if it's quite my thing. If I'm going to be comparing this so much to Brother Cadfile, that might um, not be great. It might be a bit unfair to the series if it's actually nothing like Brother Cadfile. So that is it. I don't think anything I've just said in the last couple of minutes made that much sense, but I'm really hot and I need to go like drink some ice water or something. <laughs> Thank you for being with me for another week of rambling about what I've been reading. I hope you have a great week ahead of you, and I will talk to you next in my booktubeathon TBR. And until then, bye.